You gonna settle? Cause I'm gonna start filming now. You gonna come over here? Okay. Yay! We can't lick that though, okay? Look at my microphone. <clears throat> no, I just did my skincare. I just did my skincare. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm, thank you, baby. Thank you. Ooh, ooh. I need to go downstairs now, okay? I'm working. We need to clean your teeth, actually, as well. Bishop, get down. Good boy. Right, let's take you downstairs. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel, where skincare is all about progression over perfection, because perfection doesn't exist. Like, skincare had a huge boom in the last two years, right? And during that time, there were so many, like, influencers and brands and experts saying the do's and don'ts of skincare. And we learned some amazing stuff from real experts as well. And then kind of came in like the science skincare lot, who, who I love, they're amazing. And basically taught us that like everything we think about skincare isn't as black and white as we think it is. There's basically nuance in everything. So I want to share some tips, tricks, hacks, skincare rules that we were basically told we had to follow that we don't really have to, and I definitely don't follow anymore. Let's start off with the first one, which I used to be quite a, um, uh, advocate for, and that's not cleansing in the morning. So the idea of not cleansing in the morning is that you leave your skin alone. If your skin's irritated, dehydrated, stressed, all that kind of stuff, skipping that morning cleanse and leaving your natural oils, sebum, whatever during the night has grown on your face, leaving that on your face allows your skin to kind of heal and it stops putting that hydration off your face and you kind of leave your skin barrier alone. And that is great. It's still a good idea. Like you absolutely don't have to cleanse every morning. However, as somebody who uses a lot of kind of like heavier creams, ointments, a melange of products that, you know, my evening routine is the one I enjoy and I layer up whether I need to or not. I love that and I like going to bed like looking like that glazed donut. That does mean I wake up and sometimes that product is still on my skin. And what I actually found out is I was breaking out a lot more than usual, just kind of washing my face and then layering in more, then layering on more skincare. This by no means mean that you have to wash off skincare that you've used the night before. Who was it who said like, you have to wash your wash actives off your face in the morning? If there's still actives on your face in the morning, like eight hours later, you're using the wrong products. So I personally like to give my skin a nice cleanse in the morning, whether that's a cleansing water, not so much micellar water, but you could use micellar water. I personally, if I've used heavier products in the evening, like to use a gentle cleanse. That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, Make. You, you know, I love Make. They've sponsored me a couple of times. I'm nonstop going on about their products. I think their cleanser was in my last video, I think, as an empty. And it is that cleanser that is the perfect type of cleanser to use for a morning cleanse. The Succulent Skin Wash Serum Weight Cleanser is a super lightweight pH balance cleanser that does a really good job at cleansing your skin without leaving it feeling stripped. This actually contains amino acid packed surfactants, which I've never heard of before, to help maintain a healthy skin barrier. It's usually the surfactants that a lot of people like to avoid because they find them over drying and stripping. This isn't always the case, of course, it's down to formulation, but the fact that you've got something in here in something that could be potentially drying that actually moisturizes, I think it's such a clever idea and you can feel that on your skin. This has sodium hyaluronate, a great hydrating ingredient, niacinamide as well, skin barrier, caring. I feel like not a lot of people kind of see it as that kind of product, but it is. Aloe, which is soothing and calming, glycerin again, hydrating, but we also have prickly pear um, extract in here, which I love. I'm noticing in a lot more products nowadays. And cactus extracts as well, hydrates the skin. One to two pumps. I usually just use one pump in the morning and it's more than enough to kind of like glide over your skin and then rinse away. Speaking of using heavy products on the skin, let's talk about slugging. Now, slugging is the idea of putting a super Super kind of like occlusive layer over the skin, helping to trap in all that moisture and hydration. So it really is about creating that protective shield over your face. I love this. I absolutely love this. And when I was doing it, I noticed my skin was plumper. It looked happier. It worked particularly well for areas like around my nose, up here, um, around these bits, I forget what they're called. <laughs> areas where my skin would usually suffer from dryness, flakiness, and even rough textured skin. The, <laughs> the products I used to use, like Vaseline, which works absolutely fine. CeraVe Healing Ointment, again, works absolutely fine. I started to find them feeling like, I would start dreading doing it because it started to feel a little bit like, 
like slimy, like sluggy, a bit slimy. And my face would start sticking to the pillows. And again, I'd wake up obviously with that product on my face because it's not going anywhere. And then I was starting to break out more. So, <laughs> and you really need to cleanse your face before you do this and, you know, make sure you apply your spot treatments, um, all that kind of stuff before you then put this occlusive layer over the top. So I found that it would still be on my face. And then, you know, I would do my water rinse in the morning and then um, I'd start breaking out eventually. So, so one thing I like to think about is what is the key components of this slugging? And as I mentioned, it's just any kind of occlusive kind of layer. It's any kind of product that forms a protective sealant over the skin. And this doesn't have to be Vaseline or CeraVe healing ointment. One product I absolutely love, again, is by today's sponsor from Make. This is their newest product. This is the Hibernation Capsule Overnight Recovery Balm. And this is essentially, its job is to do slugging. <laughs> so it's got this more hydrating kind of feel to it though, even though it goes on the skin and you can still feel a very slight layer on the skin, nothing like Vaseline or healing ointment. It's very, very light, not greasy, not sticky. It does have this almost like watery feel to it. It's very hard to explain in this kind of like bouncy textured product. So you don't have to dig in there either. You're just having to glide over the top and apply this over your skin. So yeah, this forms that layer in order to keep in all that hydration because usually at night, trans epidermal water loss is at its peak. So I'm just going to read from the product description. It says it's formulated with oligopeptides, upcycled apple saccharide and fermented marine microorganism, basically allowing this product to work while you sleep. And you do wake up more radiant, plumper, dewier looking naturally without that thick <laughs> kind of like wanting to rinse off immediately feeling of product on your skin. You know, I would usually wake up the next morning when I use the healing ointment looking like greasy, because then I, I just have to go up and go straight for a dog walk and I'd be out in public like, dripping all down here and be like, hey guys. Whereas this is super light and you wake up the next morning like you just applied a normal moisturizer in the evening. And that's what it does feel on the skin, like a normal moisturizer. I've got it on now and you can barely tell. I'm not like sheeny and shiny. So the marine microorganisms in here actually help the uh, reduce the appearance of enlarged pores. We have a vegan lanolin alternative. So lanolin is what you'll find in these balms and um, heavy lip balms. So this is basically a blend of triglycerides that derive from vegetables, whilst the upcycled apple extract works as a humectant. This is really interesting. It's actually a byproduct of cold pressed juice. So they're literally using waste product in here, which I think is amazing. I find that so interesting. But yeah, slugging, still something I do but I feel like it's evolved a lot. So thank you to Make for sponsoring that segment of today's video. You can find all the products linked in the description box at the very top. Let's talk about cleansing. So last year, the year before, there was a trend of the 60 second cleanse using an oil cleanser, which is a popular technique estheticians are taught in esthetician school. And you know, it kind of made its way onto the internet. It got popularized and everyone was like trying it. A lot of people got it wrong and started doing it every night. It's, it's not an every night kind of thing, but this is basically the process of getting like an oil cleanser, a cleansing balm, oil cleanser, work best, rubbing that over the skin, and then you get all these little oil plugs, blackheads, whatever, come out of your skin. And not from that, but kind of about the, around the same time, people were saying, you know, you have to cleanse for two minutes, you have to cleanse for one minute, one minute, 30 seconds. So I used to be in my bathroom, religiously cleansing for a minute, like this, like everywhere, making sure everything got off my face, which is fine, but also you don't have to do that. <laughs> And I used to be so, like, so into it. Like, I used to time it and be obsessive with it. Whereas now, I just kind of do what I think is best for my skin. For example, I double cleanse in the evening. I don't need to be cleansing for two minutes altogether. Whilst I usually do, because I'm, like, on my phone or I'm watching a video, I just take my time. You can oil cleanse for 30 seconds. You can use your second cleanser for 30 seconds. But the key here is to make sure you are cleansing. Of course, Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, who probably has more credits on this channel than I do right now, she mentions in a blog post, and I think a video as well, that whilst one minute is probably a decent time to cleanse, you don't have to do this. It's cut a very interesting long story short. I'll link to her blog post down below. Basically, as long as you're moving around, as long as you're massaging and getting in all those areas, my 30 seconds of cleansing will be absolutely fine. Is there any con to cleansing for the one minute? No, other than it's probably like, for me, the most boring step of the routine. I kind of want to get from my bathroom to my vanity and in as little time as possible. But you know, and there's certain days where maybe I will cleanse for a minute if I've been outside and been layering up my sunscreen, which isn't something I often do in the winter, the colder months, then yeah, I'm going to take longer cleansing. But if I've been inside all day, working. I'm not going to be doing like a full two minute cleanse. There's just no point. Quick one, two, three. 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See, that already feels too long and I wasn't even halfway through a 30 second cleanse, you know? I'm rigorous with a cleanse, but a lot less obsessed with the amount of time that I'm cleansing for after being told we must cleanse for one minute. I talk about this so often, so, so often, but I wanna go a bit more in depth with this. I don't use vitamin C anymore. There was a time where I felt bullied into using vitamin C, <laughs> not bullied. I felt pressured, pressured is the right word, into using a vitamin C because like retinol, you kind of hear all this stuff from the experts that it's the one of your must use products every morning, use alongside sunscreen to boost those antioxidant benefits, clear dark spots, even out skin tone, all that kind of stuff. It's like a must do. And I felt guilty for not having it in my routine, but myself, and my skin, it, it, we just don't get along with vitamin C. But the benefits of vitamin C, the antioxidants, the evening skin tone, the lightening of darker spots on your face are all very, very um, important. They're all things that I want in my routine, you know? I do use one vitamin C, I've got it here actually, this is the Peach and Lily Transparency Pro Spot Treatment, but this is a spot treatment for dark, um, dark spots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which I absolutely love and works amazingly, but all over my face, I wouldn't be able to use that. You're not meant to, but I wouldn't be able to use something like that all over my face. Vitamin C serums for me sting a little bit, my skin feels a bit fizzy, I seem to flush a fair bit with vitamin C, even with the lower percentages. So, I don't use it. I don't use it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, but like worry myself into using it. There are some great alternatives, maybe not all in one encompassing product like vitamin C, but if I want the antioxidant benefits, I'm gonna use, for example, like niacinamide, not quite the same thing, but you've got those benefits in there. Azelaic acid, my Polish choice azelaic acid is one of my favorite products of all time. As for niacinamide, the Galactomyces and niacinamide serum from Tune, Tune 28. This is a gift from Yes Style, absolutely love it. With azelaic acid for brightening, you have so many things in every product. Again, niacinamide is great for that. Your exfoliations, your AHAs. Alpha Arbutin from The Ordinary is an amazing product that can help even out skin tone, um, light and dark spots. And you know, green tea, is a great antioxidant as well. So whilst I don't get all the benefits that one vitamin C serum can give you, I kind of get those benefits, not just in serums, but from pretty much combined lots of steps from my skincare routine without even having to make an effort. So retinol was the same kind of thing. Vitamin C, I don't feel pressure to use products that, you know, science hugely, hugely recommends people using their skincare routine. I don't feel that pressure to use it every day in my skincare routine or have to use it like I used to. So the next product that I really use to be not against but I had my own kind of like thoughts and opinions about it that's eye creams I absolutely love eye creams now I used to be under the impression that the majority of eye creams were essentially moisturizers the same thing repackaged you know they, they take this moisturizer then put it in like a tub that big and call it an eye cream which some brands definitely do I used to think just what a waste of money I could just bring my moisturizer up to my under eyes and I'll be absolutely fine and yes that did work then I used to experience like really weird things like obviously I'd get those little like um milia under my eyes my under eyes would feel greasy because the moisturizer wasn't quite taking to under my eyes like it did the rest of my skin or or if I was using a lighter weight moisturizer, it would just feel drying under here for some reason, especially around here as well. So then I just kind of stopped using it altogether. Um, and then you can see, you can see the difference when you're not applying any kind of hydration or moisture under your eyes. So while some eye creams and some brands do tend to just repackage moisturizers and up the price and call them an eye cream, there are some amazing eye creams out there that have ingredients in that are specifically used for under the eyes. The brand Dew Skin recently posted um, a video on their Instagram. Instagram. Literally, I saw it this morning before I was filming this video with the co-founder Joyce Lemos. Joyce Lemos, I believe her name is, who is a cosmetic chemist, answering the question, are eye creams a load of bullshit? Or are they just fancy moisturizers? Or are they actually good? So again, very interesting long story short, what this means is that a lot of brands will take one of their very popular moisturizers, but then they'll add in ingredients that are specifically targeted for under the eyes. The issue here is that a lot of those ingredients are a lot more expensive. I thought this was the same post, but I read somewhere that the problem with, not the problem, but why eye creams can sometimes be more expensive is because they have ingredients in like caffeine. This is, I'm, I'm saying this word, like verbatim to someone I saw this morning. If I see their thing, I'll credit them here. But caffeine is a good example of a ingredient that is very effective under the eyes, but also expensive in a formulation. So yeah, sometimes a, a brand will take their like award-winning formulations, like a very popular product, a very popular moisturizer from their range, put some actives in it, like some specific under eye ingredients, 
and then it will become an eye cream. In my experience, um, when there's like an eye cream version of a popular product, the majority of the time the formulation is also a lot lighter um, under the eyes, it has a different texture. And remember, we can't just read an ingredient list and then match them and be like, well, they're the same product. Formulation is a whole thing. So I do use eye creams. The one thing that has really made a difference for me is the Dew Skin um, Forever Under Eye Mask. Unlike disposable eye masks, you use these with your everyday eye creams, eye creams that you love. You kind of put them on your skin, don't fully rub them in so they're a little bit tacky. You put the eye mask over the top, then this allows for maximum absorption of your eye products, under eye products. And you can see, you can see there's like a brightness to it. There's like a dewy plumpness to your under eyes that I don't often get from just using a, a eye cream alone. And I'll do this in the morning or before an event or something like that. To be honest with you, I'll use it all the time. I do it all the time. But it's not a necessity. I like to do it in the evening as well. I tend to not do it so much and just use an eye cream. But the difference I see under my eyes by making sure I'm efficiently moisturized and hydrated under there by using the right thing. That's the thing as well. Like sometimes I just can't be bothered to find a moisturizer that works under my eyes because more often than not, it doesn't work under my eyes. So I'm just gonna spend that little bit extra on an eye cream. And there are some really affordable eye creams out there as well. They don't all have to be expensive. So I'll link some of my favorites down below as well variations of prices. So those are some skincare practices, rules, must do's that I don't do anymore. You don't have to do it. No one has to do it. No one's forcing you. <laughs> Only you know your skin and what it wants and what it needs. So if something doesn't work for you, but everyone else is doing it, don't stress. Don't stress like I used to. Just let it happen. Let other people do it and find alternatives and things that work for you. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any rules that you used to swear by or were convinced you had to do that nowadays you're just like, mm, I'm not going to bother. Leave those in the comments. You can watch some more product reviews here and some general light entertainment here, and I'll see you over there.